Hi there, my name is Gardner Bryant. I run a YouTube and Odyssey channel that's dedicated to free and open source software. I've made a career out of Linux video editing, and I wanted to share some of the tips and tricks that I've learned over the years with you. Thankfully, Purism asked if I wanted to do this uh, video series, and I said, absolutely, that sounds like something I'd love to do. Uh, they provided me with a Libra 14 laptop to actually do this on. Uh, so thanks to Purism for uh, their support of Linux video editing. Uh, this is a niche community, but it's a growing one. Before we jump into the weeds when it comes to like the nitty gritty of video editing on Linux, I wanted to take a minute and kind of get a lay of the land. Video editing is a complex topic with many editors for you to choose from, both proprietary and open source. So let's cover some of the non-linear video editing suites that are available for Linux, uh, and then we'll jump into some of the uh, other software that you'll use uh, when producing content on Linux. And then in the next episode, we'll talk about why I choose the Linux video editor that I do. Without further ado, let's talk about some of the most popular and most powerful video editing software suites on Linux. First up, we have Flowblade. Flowblade is an editor written in Python. It's got a great user interface and handles compositing and other effects well. It's got a good selection of audio and video filters, and Flowblade handles exports of most common video and audio formats, and relying on the MLT and FFmpeg framework. One of the biggest drawbacks of Flowblade is that it is not cross-platform and it only works on Linux. Next up, we have OpenShot. OpenShot is a simple video editor that can help anyone author video projects with basic effects and transitions, as well as manipulate audio clips. It supports many video formats and can upload directly to YouTube. Shotcut. While Shotcut is in the same league as Caden Live, it has a few more advanced video editing features, including great support for 4K video editing. It's also available on other platforms like macOS and Windows. Next up, we have DaVinci Resolve. DaVinci Resolve is the only proprietary software on this list, and you might be thinking, well, why would you include any proprietary video editing software on this list at all? But there's a good reason. DaVinci Resolve is professional. It's used in the production of Hollywood movies, and it shows that there really is a market for professional level video editing on Linux. Produced by Blackmagic, DaVinci Resolve provides tools for video editing, color correction, and audio post-production. Next up, we have Olive. Olive is the newest entry on this list, beginning development in 2018 and being developed by YouTuber Matt KC. Olive seeks to closely replicate the Adobe Premiere video editing workflow. It uses a similar hotkey setup and the timeline and effects function very similarly to Premiere. The Olive website is now teasing version 2.0 as coming soon, and I'm hoping that version 2 means a more stable and compatible version, as I think Olive is probably the most exciting video editor on this list. Finally, for non-linear video editors, we have Caden Live. Caden Live is my preferred video editor. It's part of the KDE application suite. Of all the FOSS video editors, it's the most stable. It has the most features with a familiar interface, including two video monitors, a project bin, multi-track editing timeline, and a customizable layout. It also supports a wide variety of video codecs, including RAW, DV, D10, MPEG, AVC HD, WebM, H.264, and H.265, and exporting is just as flexible as it uses the MLT and FFmpeg framework. Now, there are many other video editors on Linux, and I'm not gonna go over every one of them here. There are great options like PTV, Lightworks, Cinelara, and even Blender, but I chose the grouping I did because I feel like they are the most representative of the wide gamut that you will find on Linux. If you're interested in trying out any video editor, please do. The Linux video editing scene is actually pretty awesome at this point and deserves more uh, recognition from the community. So I've used the term nonlinear video editor a few times. That's the technical term for this category of software. Now, nonlinear is used in comparison to how film used to be edited, where physical cuts would have to be made to actual film and they'd be spliced together in a linear fashion. Don't let this term fool you though. Today, there really aren't any instances I can think of of linear video editing software. Now, while the following aren't necessarily video editors, they are definitely useful when producing content on Linux. So I wanted to go over a few of the software tools you might use when uh, developing or producing shows on Linux. Number one, OBS Studio or Open Broadcast Software. 
If your video production needs footage captured from a computer screen or an external source, like a webcam, microphone, or HDMI in source, look no further than OBS. It's easy to learn, highly configurable, and exceptionally powerful. You can capture multiple video streams, composite them in real time, record to a file on your local storage, or even stream to a service like YouTube or Twitch. Audacity. While most video editors have some measure of audio effects that can be applied to your timeline, there's nothing that compares to dedicated audio editing software. Audacity is a free and open source audio editing software suite that gives you absolute control over your audio. I mainly use it to record from my microphone when I'm filming or to apply post-processing effects to my audio once I'm done recording. And we'll cover the basics of audio post-processing in a later entry in this series. GIMP. Now, GIMP is an image manipulation program similar to uh, something like Photoshop that gives you absolute power over every pixel in a photo or other still composition. You might be wondering what a photo editing tool is doing on a list about video editing, but it's very powerful and it's super useful in media production. It doesn't matter if you're trying to create a tracking mat or a compositional mask or just creating custom titles for your production, GIMP can help with all of it. Finally, Handbrake. Handbrake is an incredibly useful media encoding tool, which allows you to quickly and easily re-encode a video or audio file into a different codec. I use Handbrake in a number of ways in my productions. If I need to send a large 4K file to one of my other editors who has a terrible internet at home, I can just transcode the 4K file into something like a 540p video, taking a 15 gigabyte file to less than 700 megabytes. I can also convert my final 4K YouTube video exports to a 720p version for upload to Odyssey, which is a blockchain-based media sharing platform that is often constrained for bandwidth. Going forward, this series is going to cover a variety of topics that pertain to video production on Linux. We'll cover Caden Live, optimizing your workflow, editing high-resolution footage, basic editing tips and tricks, adding visual interest to your videos, color correction, rendering, and more. So now you have a bunch of options on what kind of tools you would want to use when it comes to media production on Linux, but that's everything that I wanted to cover in this video. Make sure you stay tuned for the next episode in this series where we talk about why I personally choose Caden Live as my video editor of choice. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you all have a great day and I'll see you in the next one.